Hi friends, I'm Derek here with take four of this video. Take four? Yeah. I'm talking about brains, what they do when you are exercising cognitive function. I've had a lot, if you spoke to, speak to one INTP ever, who self identifies as an INTP, you'll probably hear about Daria Nardi, who is this guy who made these, this, these brain scan studies uh, in which he showed a correlation between cognitive function, supposedly, and the brain activities. Everyone seems a little bit obsessed with that, but I, I'm less interested so much in in saying that this or that correlates with a cognitive function. That's a tricky thing to say because a cognitive function isn't a piece, a chunk of flesh inside your brain. However, <coughs> if we look at improvisation specifically and compare the two, we could find some very interesting results. So let's review what the two studies show, first of all. The Christmas tree brain is the any brain supposedly in action. What it means is that I will read this bit here. It's transcontextual thinking. According to UCLA professor Dario Nardi in his newly released book, regardless of what kind of stimulus enters the brain, be it sight, sound, smell, sensation, the brain responds by rapidly processing that stimulus in multiple regions, including regions seemingly not applicable to the stimulus. Responses to the stimuli tend to be fast, creative, and sometimes seemingly contradictory, except to the originator of these thoughts. Indeed, these are the brain patterns of the ultimate brainstormers in the psychological type world, the ENTP and the ENFP, and to the electrics of the INTP and INFP. Another name for these types are the extroverted intuitives. In the case of ENFP and the ENTP, the extroverted intuition is a dominant psychological function, occupying half of all the brain energy these types use every day. Doesn't this sound wonderful? It is, except that with this highly energized state goes creative burnout. Another hallmark characteristic of the type is to work in fits and starts, waiting for the moment of inspiration to hit and set off this powerful pattern all over again. Pattern of thinking long described in extrovert intuitive personality type scans. Now, types can, I'm sorry, intuitive personality types can now be supported by EEG findings. Okay, so the other thing that this article says, and this is an article that uh, Nafritari sent me, um, it says, stop doing that, um, mm. Recently, I was at a brain conference on managing bad habits and addictions. The presenter marked that nowadays there is a sort of some nowadays there has to be some sort of neural correlates as measured by MRI or other type of scanning or imaging device to support psychological and cognitive theories. Right. So now I want to talk a little bit about this other article which is a lady named Alt plus F4, please. It's her blog or something, but it's really good. She's a really good writer. So I do want to talk a little bit about what she says here. Um, all right, so... What's going on? Cognitively, this pattern is called transcontextual thinking. Regardless of what kind of stimulus enters the brain, be it a sight, sound, a smell, a sensation, or so forth, the brain responds by rapidly processing the stimulus in multiple regions, including regions seemingly not applicable to the stimulus. For example, for most people, hearing the word dog and cat will evoke auditory regions and perhaps some visual or memory regions. Perhaps we would recall a beloved childhood pet. However, the NE types get busy using all regions to tap relationships across situations, perhaps suddenly imagining a story about two brothers, one of whom is faithful and sociable like a dog, while the other is independent and quiet like a cat. They might wonder about dog and cat writing styles, too. Then she said that we experience creative highs and creative hangovers. And when we're in a state other than flow, we tend to feel off task. We can contradict ourselves, pursue possibilities that hinder each other. So anyway, I wanted to mention her great writing as, as well. Uh, she does warn that sometimes when any types provide fast creative responses, 
the response are too creative, resulting in baloney rain from the sky. So, um, you know, watch out for the baloney. Now, where I want to go with this next is to the study on the jazz improvisation. And I want to read the beginning part of this, the introduction. A significant number of recent studies have used functional neuroimaging methods to investigate the perception of musical stimuli by the human brain. The broad appeal of these studies is likely to be related to the universal nature of music throughout history and across cultures, as well as the intrinsic relationship between music and language. Fewer studies, however, have examined the central mechanisms that give rise to music performance, while to our knowledge only one other study has examined the neural substrates that give rise to the spontaneous production of novel musical material, a process that extends well beyond the technical or physical requirements of musical production per se. Spontaneous musical performance, whether through singing or playing an instrument, can be defined as the immediate online improvisation of novel melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic musical elements within a relevant musical context. Most importantly, the study of Spontaneous musical improvisation may provide insights into the neural correlates of the creative process. Creativity is a quintessential feature of human behavior, but the neural substrates that give these give rise to it remain largely unidentified. Spontaneous artistic creativity is also con is, is often considered one of the most mysterious forms of creative behavior, frequently described as occurring in an altered state of mind beyond conscious awareness or control. True, if it's done right, otherwise it's crappy, while its neurophysical basis remains obscure. Here we use functional neuroimaging methods to examine musical improvisation as a prototypical form of spontaneous creative behavior with the assumption that the process is neither mysterious nor obscure, but is instead predicated on novel combinations of ordinary mental processes. It has been suggested that the prefrontal cortex is a region of critical importance that enables the creative process, which includes self-reflection and sensory processing as integral components. We hypothesized that spontaneous musical improvisation would be associated with discrete changes in prefrontal activity that provide a biological substrate for actions that are characterized by creative self-expression in the absence of conscious self-monitoring. So this is an important part of it for me. To me, this is the key thing. Why would it be the case that spontaneous musical performance would necessitate a lack of self-awareness? But I totally agree it does. You have to turn off I don't know. Well, this thing says you have to turn off your prefrontal cortex, basically. So what it ends up saying is that when you do this stuff, you deactivate your self-monitoring. Your I've always described it as to students before I understood cognitive function, they used to think, well, you're just not trying hard enough, or you're just not, you're just not. Come on. Come on now, you can come up with more ideas than that. Well, not necessarily. It depends what, what they've got in their stack, right? And just because they can't come up with a bunch of new ideas on the fly doesn't make them, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them, right? It, it means they've got strength in some other area instead. So, Okay, here's the thing, I'm, this is what I want to know. The big question in this video, this is really the point of the video, I want to know. They're talking about these various improvisational situations. Uh, they asked them to either improv, improvise off of a scale or improvise uh, on top of a chord progression or improvise, and, and then they gave them hearing the chord progression and or not hearing the chord progression, like not having somebody comp under them, right? But the reason I want to know about this is because obviously it's something I do. Like most people want to know about stuff that they do. If you're a, a music improv improviser, improvisizer, 
improviser like me, then you're probably curious about it too. But what I want to know is how common is it for people to do what I do and what Matt, my friend Matt does. I know freestyling is common in rap. I want to know how common is it for people to make freestyle songs with not just freestyling um, leads, like which is what they were basically using for improvisation, you know, freestyling leads, lead piano leads over chord progressions, um, freestyling the chords. So there's no chord progression to improvise off of, right? See, this is the thing. Everything they, they were doing is they're improvising off of something. I'm not improvising off of anything because I'm improvising the thing I'm improvising off of it concurrently, right? They're saying, okay, well, here's a chord progression for you, jazz player. Now you improvise over top of it. And, and then they get used to the chord progression. Okay, that's what the chord progression is. So they know where it's going to go, right? Is that the chord progression? Is that what we're going to play over? Okay. Now I know what the chord progression is going to be. I can play over. Fine. And then they're going to say. So I'll just go. Okay, so then they're given the chord progression in there. But when I make a song, I'm making all of those things up plus words at the same time concurrently so I want to know how common is that and to the extent that it is quite common and there's other examples to compare against how what's the competition like uh, am I worse than others am I better than others at that I think I'm better at that other people than that but I bet there's a lot of people out there who can do it really well also. Probably a lot of ENGPs and ENFPs, right? So I want to know how common it is for people to actually do it. And I want to know if there's some brain study place that wants to uh, study these cognitive function things. I want in on it. I want my brain studied. I can improvise shit. You can take pictures of my brain while I improvise stuff. That's fine. It'd be great. Yeah, I can improvise stuff. I can improvise stuff. I can improvise, I can improvise. If you want a thousand wives, go to a preacher. If you want a thousand lives, better go to the arcade. If you want someone to improvise, well, I'm your guy, look at me with your eyes You'll see that I'll do just fine They say I've got to be absent from the equation If I am going to achieve improvisation So I will close my eyes Facilitate that vector's wise That wise, wise thing to do So wise indeed Okay, that's the video.